Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm excited to take you along to our next destination, Wujin. If you caught my last video, you'll know we just bid farewell to Suzhou and are now embarking on a two-day stay in Wujin. Wujin, like many other places we visited on this trip, is a captivating glimpse into old China. It's the fourth ancient town we've explored so far, each with its own unique charm. One thing that sets Wujin apart is its renowned silk production and the intriguing folklore surrounding it. It's a bit eerie, but definitely adds to the mystique of the place. If you're intrigued by spooky tales, it's worth delving into. Getting to Wujin wasn't as straightforward as I expected, considering its popularity. We had to navigate through a series of subway rides, bus transfer, and finally a DD trip, totaling about three to four hours of travel time. During our stay, we opted for the Waterside Resort Hotel within the ancient town itself. This proved to be a wise choice given China's perpetual crowds. Staying inside the park allowed us exclusive access, ensuring quieter moments before and after regular hours. For two nights, we paid $330 Canadian, which is not bad at all given the popularity of this place. Booking accommodations within the Wuxian Resort area can be a bit tricky, so I'd advise extra caution. We almost ended up outside the resort, which wouldn't have been ideal. compact size, the hotel staff were incredibly hospitable, even surprising us with a delightful Chinese New Year souvenir. And although the room was cozy, the view was spectacular. So this is what we're gonna have. A 
notable aspect of visiting Bujin is the additional park entrance fee, approximately $30 Canadian per person. However, if you're staying within the resort, it's a one-time fee granting unlimited access. Exploring the west side of Bujin reveals a grandeur not seen in other Asian towns. The towering buildings exude a majestic aura, although they may not translate as vividly in photos compared to Suzhou's vibrant scenery. You look like you look at me. I said, fuck. How much more cleaner here? Relatively bad all day. What's hangs out like? Is it also a nice hotel? Not cheap. See that? I think in pictures. We would have had a hotel there and we would have to walk. Another popular activity is dressing up in traditional attire for photos. Although we considered it, an unexpected bout of illness deterred us from pursuing the idea. <clears throat> Street food is a must try here despite some lengthy queues. We lucked out with a shorter wait and indulged in a popular delicacy, though eating the paper wrapper was a novel experience. While waiting in line, a brief encounter with a mouse caused quite a stir among fellow patrons, much to the bemusement of my fearless boyfriend. <laughs> For those willing to splurge, a gondola ride offers a unique perspective of the town. 
although at a steep cost of 600 RMB compared to Suzhou at 120 RMB. For dinner, we left the park to sample some local cuisine, which unfortunately fell short of our expectations, especially considering the higher than anticipated prices. <laughs> It's not even tied up, it's just straight. Just get rice like your mouth. On our way back, we stumbled upon a charming cat cafe, a testament to China's growing fascination with feline companionship. The impeccably groomed cats were undeniably adorable, making it a delightful pit stop. <laughs> Why is there so much stuff? I just put it over. we ventured down to the breakfast area, a perk included in our resort stay. It's a communal space where guests can indulge in a predominantly Asian spread featuring comforting congee and savory noodles.
on the street. exploration continued with a visit to the east side of Wujin Park. Though it's only a 15-minute walk, we decided against a shuttle bus due to heavy traffic, a decision I strongly advise others to consider. <laughs> En route, we stumbled upon an old theater performance, a surprisingly delightful experience that far exceeded its portrayal on television. <laughs> Admission to the east side included in the $30 fee allows for a one-hour visit, although enforcement seemed lax. Despite being advertised as less popular, the east side still drew sizable crowds, although smaller than its western counterparts. Authenticity permeates the east side, evident in its preserved structures and continued local residency, a stark contrast to the reconstructed west. <laughs> museum proved unexpectedly fascinating, offering insights into historical sleeping arrangements, including intriguing details about the female bed's compartmentalized design. For a female bed, there are three exterior sections. The outermost is for the leggings and is placed farthest away from the bed because it is smelly. The middle section is for their clothes and the innermost section is for the toilet, which is also stinky, but they put perfume around it to make it smell nicer.
Returning to the resort, we regretted opting for the shuttle bus, reaffirming our earlier recommendation to avoid it. Uh, Dinner awaited at a nearby restaurant offering hot pot for $20 Canadian per person, a steal thanks to an app deal. Despite a minor flaw with the shrimp paste, the overall quality and flavor impressed us, particularly the delicious noodles. <laughs> You're done with taking pictures? Oh yeah. Recently, I After dinner, I decided to go back and grab some dessert. However, my dessert quest was halted by a bustling crowd, a common scenario in Chinese travels. <laughs> The following morning, we rose early to savor one last quiet stroll through the park before it opens to the public. Our journey continued to Hangzhou, 
with bus tickets conveniently purchased at the hotel reception for 42 RMB per person, promising a scenic two-hour ride. Stay tuned for our next adventure as we unravel the plans for our Hangzhou exploration in the upcoming video. Until then, see you soon! Thank you.